Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Spring of the Day. I'm Hazley. And I'm Hayden Henry. It's an exciting show this week with features on Arkansas Crisis Center, an organization working with local elementaries named Art Feeds, as well as a short video on a local flower shop in downtown Springdale. That's right. All of that and more as Spring of the Day starts now. Top story this week is over a local organization, Arkansas Crisis Center, that is constantly advocating anti-suicide and is always involved with our local schools. Increasing use of alcohol or drugs. Isolating from family and friends. Feeling hopeless. Feeling like a burden to others. Feeling like there's no reason to live. Talking about wanting to die. These are the warning signs of suicide. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. There's one suicide every 13 minutes in the U.S. Worldwide, someone dies by suicide every 40 seconds. Suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year. There are more than 2,000 suicide attempts each year in Arkansas. Arkansas ranks 14th in the nation for the number of deaths caused by suicide. There are over 360 deaths each year from suicide in Arkansas. February 24, 2009 um, was a normal day. Woke up, went to school, Ty went to band, he was 14. And we came home from school, did homework, had dinner, and so for some reason, he decided it was time to end his life. When my sister was 21 years old, she took her life. I was 24, and it was the most devastating thing in my whole life. I became involved in the Arkansas Crisis Center when I lost my son six years ago. Since that time, I've questioned everything about her life and my relationship with her and how it could have been different. Suicide is never, ever the answer. That changed my family's life for the rest of our lives. I think about her every day. I miss her. I miss what she would have seen. I just don't want any family to have to go through what my family has been through. He had no warning signs at all. He was perfectly happy, not depressed. Nothing changed. He just. All we can say is he had a bad day and he thought it was time for him to go. And I realized that if she just had one sliver of hope somewhere where she could have reached out and talked to someone, she could have been here. A 24-7 crisis hotline is very important to helping save lives. One particular call um, came early on when I was volunteering at the crisis center. This caller, by the time he had contacted the Arkansas Crisis Center, had already taken about three bottles of pills. In our 15-minute conversation, the caller went from ready to die to ready to live and allowed me to call the ambulance that arrived at his house, took him to the hospital, and helped him start his life anew. The caller wants to connect with the human. There is no app for uh, for crisis intervention and for suicide intervention. Connecting with another empathetic, uh, compassionate person on the other end of the line to help you through crisis, to help you through that lowest point is really, I think, what doesn't change over 30 years and I don't see that changing in the next 30 years. Having someone that is anonymous, you do not know, they, they won't judge you. So you can call them up anytime. They will sit and talk to you no matter what your problem is. Someone is always there to care. At the Arkansas Crisis Center. We will hear you. We will not judge you. We will restore your hope. We will empower you with resources and services in your area. We will save lives. 
I believe that hope changes everything. I believe that everyone deserves to be heard. I believe there should be no stigma attached to asking for help. You have the courage and the strength to ask for help. I believe in restoring hope, empowering people, and saving lives. The blues stop with me. The blues stop here. The blues stop with us all. The blues stop at the Arkansas Crisis Center. The blues stop with Charity Challenge. The blues stop now. The organization could always use some help, so for more information on them and the ways that you can help, go to www.arcrisis.org. A national group called Art Feeds is trying to get younger kids more involved with art than ever by volunteering at Parson Hills Elementary to inspire kids to be more creative. Parson Hills Elementary, students team up with Art Feeds to create art that will be showcased in downtown Springdale. Students choose theme, colors, and make the designs. So over the course of four weeks we participate in a curriculum where it totally puts it in the students' hands and then we take it over and do the design and create the mural. Students team up with RFEES members, community members, and college students with a 4 to 1 ratio so that students can have hands-on experience. This is building students' self-confidence and self-worth and when we ask them, hey, how is this mural going to make the community feel? They say it's going to inspire people, it's going to bring them joy, it's going to tell them to continue to be happy. It's helping the students have ownership and a sense of place. We're really placing a lot of value on their artwork by putting it permanently on the wall. Our Feeds is a therapeutic art and creative education program that create problem solving skills and self-efficacy in children. We work to address mental and emotional wellness with students by consistent expression, but also creative education, knowing that their creativity is really powerful. With chapters in Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, Art Feeds is currently working with 19 different schools and is looking to expand to as many as they can. Springdale is well known for its excellence in its schools, and it's nice for them to be acknowledged. John Crane joins us in the studio to tell us about one of our schools being celebrated for its excellence. Every year, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette presents an award to the school that they think is the best of the best. This year, Helen Tyson was honored with the award for the best of the best for the middle schools. On October 22nd, Helen Tyson was recognized as being the best of the best middle school in Northwest Arkansas. I would think it's because of our personalization of learning for kids. Any student, any parent, any community member that walks in the store and working with the community, we want to meet them where their needs are. Um, I would say safety is definitely something that's a factor. Um, they want to know that their kids are coming to a place that doesn't just have great instruction, but they also feel safe and secure. Helen Tyson is the best of the best because our teachers really know what we what's best for us, and if we ask them a question, it's a um, educational answer because they really want us to succeed in our life when we leave Helen Tyson with school. Helen Tyson is great because there's so many opportunities here to make new friends and discover new things. Um, I'm a part of something called Crew, and we have learned so much about our speaking skills and meeting new people and really just interacting with people that we've never met before. Helen Tyson offers great clubs to get in that will ultimately help you throughout your life. When you look at Helen Tyson as a whole school, which is what we do, we look at more than just the academics. We look at teaching students to develop even way past what, what are the skills that we can provide them now that will help them in the future. This is Helen Tyson's second year to win the award, making Springdale that much more of a great choice. Thank you, John Crane. And now it's time for this week's News Around the District segment. Arkansas Children's Hospital provided a dental sealant for 146 George Elementary students who did not normally receive dental care. The dental sealant program is ready to serve six Springdale schools and will provide service for about 1,200 Northwest Arkansas students during the academic year. April Steiner Bennett, who earned a spot as a pole vaulter for the United States Olympic team in 2008, has resigned as librarian at Helstern Middle School to prepare for the 2016 Olympics in Rio. Before she left, though, she was selected to give a TED Talk. Her title, Dream Builders vs. Slayers. She practiced in front of Helstrom students Monday and then asked for feedback and preparation for her TED Talk Saturday at Westminster College in Missouri. 
School of Innovation students and Principal Joe Rollins shared information about school about the school with business leaders at the Springdale Chamber of Commerce. Morning Brew Thursday, morning at McDonald's headquarters. For more news around the district, select the Springdale Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Up next is our high school segment. This week we have a video over the University of Arkansas, which Hispanic Students Day at Springdale High School Spanish students recently attended. Students from AP Spanish classes recently attended the U of A Hispanic Campus Day. Campus Day is an event that's planned by the University of Arkansas for um, Latinos who are thinking about studying either at the university or just going on to college. And they um, have guest speakers, they give a tour of the campus, they just, it's a day for Hispanos specifically to have an experience at the university. The students got to hear various speakers talk about many different opportunities that can be founded at college. Well, one of the welcoming speakers welcomed us to the campus day tour. She mentioned how, if looking into careers, you just don't close a door on something that you automatically think you won't like. You first have to open the door, peek in, and see if you like it or not. If you don't like it, then you close the door. But don't just close the door on chances. To Rafael Arciga. Um, he works in the Office of Admissions. Uh, I've known him uh, since the beginning. He would come and speak to my classes, and now that he has this office, he um, keeps us involved to make sure that my students can attend events like this. But he has other guest speakers um, from the Multicultural Center, from each of the colleges, that come and share information. Campus Day was very beneficial for the students by preparing for college. It'll benefit my students in lots of different ways. It'll expose them to um, what university looks like. It will help them see um, university students and hear from their perspective what it's been like to be able to attend university and look for scholarships to be able to get there, especially for Spanish-speaking students in our community. I think it will be beneficial for my future because when they gave us a tour around the school, it help me realize like help, helps me know where the things are and the U, U of A is like my number one choice for college so I really find it helpful to go on the tour just to know where things are. The event was a success for all AP Spanish students involved. From Bulldog TV, I am Princesa. The campus day happens yearly and is a great way to learn about the university. Harbor's news team covered a story over the Arkansas Razorback group named Arkansas Reads that is all about providing on-level books for children in Arkansas. Countless children in Northwest Arkansas aren't provided with the opportunity to read. Our community came together and developed an idea that would ensure more reading for students. Razorback Reads is a multi-service project from, organized by the Volunteer Action Center at the U of A. They're working at providing books for underprivileged children across Northwest Arkansas. This event, the Little Free Library Build, started with a group of my students at Helen Tyson last year who put the first Little Free Library into Springdale in front of John Tyson Elementary. And the ultimate goal is to identify areas in Springdale and the rest of Northwest Arkansas where students don't have access to books at home and place the little free libraries in those locations so that any child has access to all the books that they could want to read. A project like this helps the volunteers as well, and not just in a humbling way. It gives them ways to exercise their future career skills. Engineering for a living and being in the CNC class and having an opportunity to make a project like this is uh, helping me further my skills for universities. Far more work was put into this project than one would think. It was a combined effort from Helen Tyson Middle School and Harbor High School Construction that made this possible. Uh, the fact that Tyson was we uh, Middle School was willing to do this work, they have placed uh, through GPS coordinates where they want to put these little free libraries in areas of need. They're set up to encourage reading. So when they're placed in the community, there's 25 that will be placed in different locations to serve uh, students of any age who come across the library, see a book that they're interested in, want to read it, they can take a book, hopefully some of them will put a book back in so that someone else can uh, 
also have that opportunity to take a uh, and read that book. It is projects like this that bring our community closer together and make Northwest Arkansas a more attractive place to live. For HBWN, I'm Sarah Gill. There's a great page on the Arkansas Razorback Service website, service.uark.edu, that tells you all about the Razorback Reads Group and the ways that you can help them. Coming up after the short break, we have our, feature te our teacher feature at Hunt Elementary who stays with their students no matter what grade they're in, and later we know that Springdale Schools provides excellence, excellent education, but what about health services? Stay tuned. What's up, sir? I wish that guy had a voice of a goat. The School of Innovation, giving students the opportunity to mold their education and be the voice of their future. Student-led conferences not only give students the power to create their own goals, but surpass them. No matter what your goals are, School of Innovation will be there to help achieve them. Whether it's to become a doctor or an engineer, the School of Innovation aids students throughout their future plan. Welcome back. This week's teacher feature is about a standout teacher in J.B. Hunt Elementary who serves who deserves some extra rec recognition. A.J. Loon Bandith went to Hunt Elementary, joined us now live. Ms. Herbert is especially a dedicated teacher to her students, choosing an unconventional method of moving up with her students from fourth to fifth grade to help transition to middle school. For research they've done for their job, you need to make sure that you get on your Prezi. At Hunt Elementary, teachers are taking personalized learning to another level. Hunt Elementary teacher Robin Hubbard's favorite part of her job is being with her students and seeing them learn something new for the first time. My favorite part about teaching is definitely the kids, just being with um, all different kinds of students from all different kind of backgrounds every day and just um, seeing them learn something new for the first time. I get lots of hugs every morning and every afternoon and um, it's pretty neat being in a job where you feel so loved and needed all day long. But what's unique about Robin Hubbard is that she stays with their students from 4th to 5th grade. According to Ms. Hubbard, she stays with their students to help them transition to middle school. From 4th to 5th, I actually looped with this class, and so I have them all again. Most of them I had last year. And that's been our big question is, how do we get them ready? We've spent a lot of time talking to middle school teachers, and we've asked them, what do they need to know? What, do they need to, um, what skills do they need to come to you with? And we've learned a lot from them. Um, we're working a lot on the responsibility side of it because um, they're going to have to learn to do things because it's the right thing to do, not because somebody told them to do it. Um, so we're trying to get them to take ownership and responsibility in their work and things that they're supposed to bring back to school. Um, we're trying to make sure that they leave elementary with the foundation in math and science and reading and writing. The benefits of staying with their students for two years is that she gets the opportunity to explain lessons in depth. Oh, it's just a really fun experience. I, I really like Miss Hubbard. She's good at explaining stuff to me when I don't understand things. Miss Hubbard does not plan to move down to fourth grade and will instead stay and continue to help students transition. The Wellness Center in Elmdale is dedicated to providing health care to elementary students and staff who otherwise would not be able to get any. Max Roeder goes to this report. The Springdale community started wellness centers in elementary schools in September 2010. Schools like Elmdale Elementary provide care for anyone who needs it, and Holly Farland is there to help anyone who walks through the door. Well, I think our services help the community by giving um, the school, their staff, the students, parents, and just the general community a place to receive health care. The Umdell Wellness Center provides care for anyone whether they have insurance or not because they understand the value of having happy and healthy people in the community. The Elmdale Wellness Center strives to help the community of Springdale get the care they need. We accept private insurance, uh, we accept Medicaid, we accept um, patients who are uninsured. Um, so anyone who needs our services uh, can call or come by and we'll do whatever we can to help you get what you need. In order to take part in the program, what you need to do is fill out an application found at the Elmdale Wellness Center. Well, you just need to call or come by and you can fill out an information packet and we can get you established as a patient here. 
um, and then make you an appointment and then by bringing proof of your income, we can determine if you qualify for our various levels of discounts. The wellness centers were built in elementary schools to provide services to students as well as adults. It's in the middle of a kind of residential area of Springdale where we can reach a lot of people who, you know, might not otherwise have such easy access to health care. The Wellness Center provides many services such as flu vaccinations, stomach bug treatments, and according to Holly Farland, much more. We see children for well child checks, for acute visits if they're you know sick, having any kind of problems. Um, we see adults for routine and well adult visits as well as chronic health management um, or problem visits and we can do referrals to outside facilities if that's what's needed. The Amdale Wellness Center isn't the only one in the city. Other schools like George Elementary and Jones Elementary also provide the same services and are found off the same principles. For Springdale Today, I'm Max Roeder. The center is open from 7 to 5 on weekdays and is available to student and parents alike. Coming up after the break, we have this week's Springdale story on Springdale's very own organic creations. Springdale is a unique place and it is a wonderful place in my opinion. There's a lot of opportunities. There's good education, uh, great neighborhoods. All about our students and really all about our education. We love our students and we want to see them successful. You really do have a sense of belonging. Oh, I think the city of Springdale is great having the diversity that we have here. Springdale Schools is a great choice. Springdale School District is a great choice. Welcome back. The owner of Organic Creations, Glenn Senatsinger, is no stranger to flowers, having been in the business for his whole life. In 2007, we moved here and uh, bought Country Gardens and have recently transitioned the name to uh, Organic Creations. Parents uh, immigrated from uh, Germany in 1965 and uh, they actually came, he was a hairdresser, and then they changed to a flower shop in 72. And uh, they had a flower shop in Dallas for about uh, 45 years. It, ha it gives us the ability to uh, share in everyone's uh, life experiences and uh, celebrations. And uh, we're excited about everything that's happening in downtown uh, with the Jones Center and the uh, Shiloh Museum and the Art Center of the Ozarks and the trail, it's perfect for our family. We've done uh, things with Crystal Bridges, numerous country clubs, and uh, we have a, uh, a very uh, loyal following at Tyson Foods, and we do a tremendous amount of business with Tyson. And uh, if you have your own business, it's important to you know, be able to spend time at home too. Uh, I like the fact that uh, everything is going on around us and uh, nothing is too far away. Uh, I can always be here in a moment's notice. Organic Creations is located in downtown Springdale on the corner of Blair and Emma. That's it for this episode of Springdale Today. For more information, be sure to check out our Springdale schools on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. As always, I'm Hayden, joined here by Hayes Lee, and have a great day.